Welcome back. Um, so today I'm going to be doing this look here on my face. It's very like easy, neutral brown, glowy. You know, it's it's not the most groundbreaking look I've ever done. I feel like the last like three looks I've done have pretty much all looked the same with just di different like variations in color. <laughs> so the cookie crumbles my guy. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. And I'm currently doing a no buy under the guise of a project called Using All of My Makeup, in which I will not be buying any new makeup in 2023 until I use every single product in my collection. So once I use a product, I cannot use it again until I've cycled through the entire category. That is the rule. And I'm sticking to it, honey. This is the look, and let's get into it. Okay, so I've successfully gone through all of my concealers, and I'm almost through my bronzers, and I've gone through all of my mascaras, which, you know, they're not hard to do because I only have, like, three or four of each of my products in that category. Oh, and I've also gone through all of my skin tint complexion products as well. So we're just, we're, we're having a lot of success. It's been kind of a lot harder to keep track of what I've actually been using because I do have so many single eyeshadows and so many like blushes. <laughs> so I did kind of quarantine a lot of things into a bag to keep track and it's filling up. It's filling up. I, even with a curated, like, like even with a curated makeup collection, like I don't have even a fraction of the size that I used to have. Like I used to have just drawers filled with makeup and I now just have like a bag that I use for my makeup artist kit um, in my bedroom. And then I have my vanity on top of my dresser that's just filled with everything that I use for my everyday. And even my everyday is like, a pretty impressive collection so it's just it's taking me a lot longer to go through all of my blushes and my eyeshadows than I anticipated so um and I've only been doing this a week but even still like I'm like wow I have a, I have a lot of blushes so um I'm gonna start with the Ilia skin tint today I have this in the shade um ST4 Formosa and in the winter time this is a pretty like spot on match for me and hopefully I can use this up this year that is the goal I, I'm hoping at least by like springtime I can have this used up because I have been having this like weird itch <laughs> I've been having this like weird like buy a foundation type of like feeling um as one gets <laughs> I guess uh, because there, last year there were a lot of, like, foundations that came out that sort of intrigued me. Like, I'm still thinking about the NARS, like, light reflecting one a little bit, but I don't know. And then the Makeup by Mario one just came out, and everybody who's been using it, even if they give, like, a bad review, I look at their face when they're using it, and I'm like, I mean, that looks pretty beautiful to me. Here's the thing, I, I can't figure out just by like looking at what people are wearing, like what my shade might be. Like sometimes I see someone who's wearing 2N and I'm like, yeah, that would match me. And then I see somebody who I think has a similar skin tone to me using 5N and I'm like, yeah, that would look good on me as well. So I'm just kind of confused as to what my shade might be. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna buy it, but I'm definitely like, it's sitting in the back of my head, like whatever. And I've been using like skin tints and tinted moisturizers for so long, like basically before it became popular, you know? I'm taking extra time, by the way, <laughs> on my complexion today because in my last video when I was editing, I was like, holy shit, you did not blend out your concealer well enough and you can definitely see like the more pigmentation like in the center of my face versus the rest of my face so i'm just that's just showbiz baby i've been using like skin tints and tinted moisturizers and stuff like that like before it was popular basically um I'm not saying like I like started some trend or anything. That's very far from the case. Nobody knows who I am. I was like a working makeup artist. I would take a full coverage concealer, do like a half pump and then cut it with 
a moisturizer to give like a more like natural luminous glow because you never know somebody's like skin type even though they tell you sometimes they're like a little more dry or a little more oily than what they realize um look at my hair oh my god uh anyways so i've been doing that type of like skin finish for <laughs> at least eight years now and i don't know i don't know what it is and it's not even like i have particularly like sensitive or um, acne prone skin all that much where I might want a little more coverage but for some reason like I just keep seeing all of these foundations coming out and they seem like they have like a little bit more coverage than I'm used to wearing and for some reason I just want them but maybe it's just because what I've been doing has become popular and I'm, I'm kind of one to stray from the path a little bit. I'm taking the NARS soft matte concealer in the shade cafe con leche with my sponge but yeah anyways um i don't know what it is that i've been like or like why i've been wanting like fuller coverage like complexion products um so i'm just i'm not gonna act on it because i'm technically in my no buy <laughs> but we'll see if the feeling passes and i have a feeling that 2023 is going to be bringing out a lot of like kind of hydrating powder products because i think that i don't think that dewy is on its way out but i think that like super emollient complexion products and like cream blushes and bronzers might be on their way out because it we were so saturated in those products the past couple of years and makeup trends kind of go like they ebb and flow with like what's popular so um yeah i i just want to like hold back for a little bit and see where the trends go and see if anything actually intrigues my interest and if it intrigues my interest if it stays like that's the whole point of being like kind of like minimal buyer you know what i mean like it's just just see what you're still into after a couple of months you know what i mean and usually when I do that, I buy a product after like thinking about it for a few months, I, I'll buy a product and I'll end up like loving it for years because I did take my time and because I didn't impulse buy it. Did any of that make sense? I have this blemish right here for literally no reason other than I was like picking at my face and like nothing was there and I just... You know, I'm a picker and I really wish that I wasn't. <laughs> I can't believe how much I didn't blend out last video and as i was editing i was like it's done so uh, it's still going up but so everybody can laugh at me on the internet but it's fine it's fine that's just how it goes sometimes you can't have a perfect makeup day every single time that's just the nature of the beast my friend i think that's pretty good that's pretty blended this little horn here, here, here. um i love this combination yeah i think it looks pretty good so I'm going to be going in with a bunch of powder products today, um, just to change it up a little bit. I'm going to be using my my baby here, my uh, Victoria Beckham Bronzing Brick with the Pro Powder 50 Sephora brand one that desperately needs cleaned. But um, I just kind of... I would like to hear everyone's New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I'm not really like a resolution person because I never keep them like... I'm a very chaotic Aries, like I just kind of do whatever I want all the time. But given that, like look at that, oh my god, I just, oh my god, this bronzer! Ah! 2023 is the year that Kay is embracing her inner villain, her inner chaos. Take, take what you will from that. Um, but yeah, I'm just um, truly embracing my my inner villain this year. But on a more positive note, I am, um, I said a re, but some of mine, even though they're not really resolutions, they're just like goals that I always set for myself. And it usually has to do with reading. I'm a, I be reading, okay? I just be over here reading a lot. I usually set myself a reading goal. I'm a big booktube watcher. Fun facts about me. Yeah, I have been seeing a lot of people's TBRs or whatever, and it's always like 23 books I want to read in 2023. So I just set a reading goal of 23 books 
And I think I can do it. I think I can do it. I, during the pandemic, I read like over 50 books. And for a person that was like working full time and like ha I have my own like separate career outside of YouTube and like even just like my normal job, which is like part of my career. But like, you know what I mean? Like I have my own, I have like a master's degree in art and I do artist residencies and like have shows and some of my paintings and my photography and stuff like that. So like I have a whole separate career out of like makeup and like doing printmaking as my job. I think that I can easily obtain reading 23 books in 2023. So that's the goal. For highlight, I am taking the Laura Mercier matte radiance baked powder and it's this big big old lady here um and it's such a soft like gentle highlighter it gives you such an ethereal glow it's very natural and i think that no matter what your age is um this would look very lovely on you i was doing makeup for like a more like mature skinned person i would use this because i think that it would look really lovely um anyways so makeup goals after my no buy, I like thought to myself, I was like self, maybe only buy 23 pieces of new makeup in 2023. And then I thought about it and I was like, you would have to be spending like about a hundred dollars a month maybe with like the type of makeup I like. And also like 23 pieces of makeup, like in 2024, if I did 24 pieces of makeup, it would be like two new products a month, which isn't like a crazy amount, but like at the end of the year, like 24 pieces of like new makeup, like that's a lot. And 23 pieces, like that's also a lot. So I told myself 10, 10 pieces of makeup because I tend to buy a lot more makeup that I was thinking about all year during like Black Friday sales and like Christmas type of things that are going on, you know? Um, so it'll it'll probably happen during the end of the year, but I think I have like a good set of like what I actually wanna try this year. So you can see the highlight, like it's very subtle, very pretty. I feel like this would suit a lot of skin tones because it is very sheer. For my skin tone, a little bit deeper and lighter, it's pretty nice. And for blush, I'm sticking with Laura Mercier and I'm using the blush color in Fresco. I think this is a beautiful, like, neutral beige. It In the pan, it looks like it has a lot of shimmer in it, but on the face, it's not glittery at all. It just, I don't know how that works, really. I don't know. I don't know. My eye on a few, like, makeup things that I really want to try, like, I keep seeing, like, the Makeup by Mario. It's like skin tint-esque bronzer that he came out with I think last year sometime and everybody thinks it's like the best like natural looking bronzer that's ever come out like I'm about that I'm about that like natural bronze like effortless type of look so I'm thinking about buying that eventually um another thing is like I keep seeing stuff about the phytosurgeons blushes and indie br and they're an indie brand that come out with like these potted cream blushes um that isn't like a for sure thing but i'm i find myself like thinking about them a little bit and also the makeup forever lip liners is a big maybe um what else oh uh violet fr violet is a makeup artist from france and i've been watching her content for a number of years now it's super like artsy and like not the way she does tutorials is she takes like a makeup bag to like a cute cafe or something like that and she does her like makeup. She did like Estee Lauder collections, head director of like Guerlain makeup, um, or at least she used to be. I don't know if she currently is, but she recently came out with her own line and it's very much like up my alley, like soft, natural looking makeup. Um, and so there's like a lipstick and a stick blush that I've been intrigued by for a pretty long time. And so I might bite the bullet after my no buy and try out some like Violette stuff. But other than that, I don't really know. I don't really know um, because I'm just, I'm pretty content with what I have. Like there's no eyeshadows that I'm really thinking about all that much because I, I thoroughly enjoy everything that I own. Um, but who knows what will come out in the coming months, like the, Every year is a surprise. Speaking of eyeshadows, let's move on to the eyes. I'm taking the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize 
cream formula in the shade Exaggerize. This is a 2022 favorite. And it's like the easiest wet looking one and done. Probably the easiest one I've ever tried other than the Urban Decay uh, Moon Dust Space Cowboy. Like, and those two together, like this and Space Cowboy together is like, oh, so beautiful. And I don't even really need to use a mirror with this because it's just so easy. Like I just kind of like swipe up into the crease. But yeah, like look at that. Like it's just so easy, it's so easy. Um, it's such a beautiful, like, warm, neutral base that's really sheer, and then it has, like, gold and silver little glitters in it that just create that beautiful wet look. And, you know, I just... I'll never stop raving about this, honestly. Like, it's just so good. It's so good. There's, like, no eyeshadows that are really intriguing me at all right now. Like the makeup by, I'm talking about makeup by Mario a lot in this video and I've, I've never tried a single thing. Um, but the um, ethereal eye palette or whatever that came out, like the only thing that intrigued me about that was the glitters. And when I saw people using the glitters, I'm like, oh, well like any of my Rowan shadows or the Urban Decay um, Space Cowboy, like that it really does the job. Like, I think Hope Miss Tom in one of their videos, they were saying like, if you have glitter toppers, you do not need this palette. You know, like it's an easily dupable palette. And if it's easily dupable, then I don't want it. I don't want it. Like I, when I was like watching reviews, like I was like, yeah, that those looks that they were creating, it's very lovely, but it's not like this look that I didn't feel like I already had like products that I could create that type of look in my collection. You know what I mean? Like I want something unique. I'm really into textures, really into like just effortless glam. Um, and you know, like maybe if I didn't have all of my single eyeshadows that I probably would have bought that palette, but you know, I just, I didn't care enough to. All right, and now I'm going in with the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. Um, but going onto that train about like eyeshadow palettes, you know, um, also let me know if you would like me to do like a thorough video of all of my favorite one and dones, like wet looking, easy one and done eyeshadows, because I, I do have quite the collection and, um, I don't mind sharing all of my favorite ones. So just let me know down in the comments if that's something that you would like to see sometime this year because I would be more than happy to make it. It would probably take me a while to make it because I would like to do like really nice B-roll footage of me applying the shadows, you know what I mean? So you can really see how they wear on the eyes versus like a swatch, you know? Talk about Pat McGrath for a second. So when Pat McGrath first launched, I was like, holy shit, that's expensive, but I get it. Like she, she's like mother makeup. You know, like, I always loved all of the looks she ever did. Like, I loved, like, reading interviews with her or, like, watching interviews with her or, like, just watching her do makeup um, anytime it was filmed. <laughs> but, like, she just does, like, such beautiful, effortless looks. Well, not, they're not, eff she just does such beautiful looks and they're always so, like, nuanced and glittery and just, like, there's like an artistry to it. Her brand came out, I was so intrigued, but like at the same time, I was like, I only care about the special shades. I only care about like the like duochrome, like dry to wet formulas that are wet looking or super metallic or just like really, really interesting shades. Like, but as the palettes as a whole, like any of them, any of the palettes, I just don't care about them. And like, that's pretty controversial to say, but like, I literally do not care about the Mothership palettes because they're over a hundred dollars and I only want the like special shades. Like I think about the Utopian Dream, like the purple in it all the time. And if that was a single, I would own it. And there's like a few other ones that have, they're like a taupey kind of shimmer. I would own those too, but I do not give an actual mm, about any of the palettes as themselves and like that's just too much money 
to like invest in like possibly not using half of the shades and only wanting like this very lovely looking, you know, metallic glitter, what have you. Um, and honestly, like with how much those palettes cost, they go on sale so much. And like a lot of the collections and stuff the brand has come out with, like they've gotten really bad reviews or they've had like chintzy packaging. And it's just like, I thought this was like, you know, the mother of makeups, like baby. And that it would have been like this very luxurious experience, like from product to packaging. And like, it just doesn't seem like it is. And so that's why I've never tried anything from Pat McGrath because I just, I can't justify spending my hard earned money on a, pro on like a product that is just subpar and, or I'm not going to use a lot or the packaging falls apart, or it's just like a recycled product with a sticker on it and you're marking it up. But then like the thing with luxury beauty is like, it shouldn't go on sale like all that often, but she's always having sales. Like they're always on sale. Like there's no reason for you to ever spend more than a hundred dollars on a Pat McGrath item now because there's always sales. And for me, that kind of like cheapens the brand. So I've never like bought a single item from Pat McGrath. And, and for some reason I feel bad about it. I don't know, like I feel like everybody who loves makeup is like, yeah, Pat McGrath. But for me, like it's just, at Charlotte Tilbury starting to like go back into some old ways where like there was like a, a time where I thought Charlotte Tilbury was absolutely amazing. Like, I still think it's a really great brand, but it's advertised as like luxury, like this like movie star aesthetic, like beautiful, like model skin and like ethereal looking pinky nude makeup. And then she just stayed on Pillow Talk for so long and like came out with all these like really crappy collections with like bad packaging. And then she stopped and it started to like, you know, be nice again and now it's starting to like I've seen so many bad reviews about the packaging for the new highlighters like what is up with that like it's it's a really expensive highlighter like that should be like a luxe experience I don't get it I'll pop my soapbox because Jesus God I'm taking the NYX lip liner in the shade nude beige I've been noticing that this is getting a lot of um attention and this has been a favorite of mine for years like years like it's so good it's such a good color pat mcgrath came out with like the really special shades and like a big palette like that and it was over a hundred dollars i would be kind of intrigued and you know if charlotte i'm pro i'm not saying i'm never gonna buy anything from charlotte tilbury again because i love the brand like i some of my favorite products are from charlotte tilbury but you know like out with like a lot of products that are just in like crappy packaging and these products are like 50 to 60 dollars sometimes and like I just I just want a little bit more like you're they're, you're marking the makeup up a lot more than what it's worth already um at least give me the illusion that I'm buying luxury through the packaging <laughs> like at least like come on like I just I don't get it like give the people what they whoop give the people what they want, which is like a luxurious experience. Like that's the whole point of it, you know? Like the Gucci makeup, like they got some like backlash about the blushes because like the blushes were fine and like some, some of them are like people's favorite blushes, but people hated the packaging. But like the bronzer is a fantastic product as I've heard and people love the packaging. So it's like a best-selling Gucci makeup product. Um, and like the eyeshadow palettes, like people have said, you know, the eyeshadows are pretty, you know, average, like they're nothing to really write home about, but I think it's the packaging that people are like, yes, like this is beautiful. Um, and that's what I want from Charlotte Tilbury and that's what I want from Pat McGrath. And you know, I just, I don't know. I didn't realize this was gonna be such a like a shit talky video. I did not mean for it to be, I just got, I just got a lot to say. Just watching the reviews on the highlighter for Charlotte Tilbury just really sparked like a fire in me. Anyway, I'm taking one of my favorite products, which is the Narsh, Narsh, Narsh? The Narsh? Narsh Sheer Lip Tint. Is that what it's called? The Afterglow Lip Balm. Never mind. This is the Afterglow Lip Balm. And this is in the shade Laguna. I don't know if this is a permanent shade. 
because they did have it as a limited edition product for a long time and then they came out with the like minis and the Sephora like birthday bundle thing and that's when I first tried it. But I own almost every single shade in this. It's kind of like a weak spot for me. Like there's something about the formula, the way they wear in the lips and um, they're, they're just really nice. I like the color. They're like such nuances in the like colors. Like they're all like very, very sheer as you can see, but they leave such a beautiful tint and it can kind of really transform a look, you know? Um, and I own them in colors that I normally never thought that I would wear. Like I have like a coral one and like I wore the orgasm one the other day, which is like that pinky, you know, the orgasm shade. God, what other colors do I have? I, I just, I just have so many, <laughs> I have the majority of the colors. Um, and I just think they're wonderful, but the brown one is my favorite. And I bought this, um, I think like a Black Friday sale or something because they came out with the full size again. So I don't know if this is still available, but it's, it's so good. It's so good. It's a neutral enough brown that it can match just about any look without like overpowering it or like cooling it down too much. Um, yeah, I just love this so much and it's kind of like my go-to with a lot of looks and it has been for a couple of years now and I just, um, I don't think I use it on my channel enough and I just want to share my love. My love, my baby. Okay, okay, that's the look. That's the look today. Um, thanks for listening to me and coming to my channel to see this look here. I'm, you know, it's, it doesn't really stray from the path all that much because I have an aesthetic with my makeup and uh, that's just what you get here. If you're into it, you're into it. I'm not changing it for nobody. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you're enjoying this project. I sure have. That's the look, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!